handsome now than I used to be. <laughs> Is that right? Okay, thank you, thank you. We recorded that in 2005 as a part of one of our uh, building projects, but I, I wanted you to see from the very get-go, even physically, where God's brought us. For two years, we met at what was Ewing's Outpost RV. Now it's just Outpost RV. It's just up here in US 20, and it rent-free. I didn't even realize what a blessing that was until we had to start paying rent. <laughs> we went from zero dollars uh, a month to around four, five hundred dollars a week at the school. It was, uh, so it's just a blessing. There's so much more I could say, but I wanted you to see it with your own eyeballs and hear some of the vision, the dream, even the facility. But most importantly, the church isn't about building, it's about people, right? So this morning, we want to celebrate. Dan, would you come on up here? We want to celebrate what God's done um, uh, in, in our lives and, and uh, in, our, in our families and in this church. And um, so this morning, you're going to hear from a lot of different, uh, different people that at one point were apart. We've got all the kids and all the youngsters in with us, and we welcome you kids. Glad to have you in here with us today. It's a little different than what we usually do. If for some reason your kids need just a little time out or whatever, the nursery is open if you have an infant or someone that age. And also, if you go down the hallway um, out here, the gallery room actually has a, a, a large screen of exactly what's happening in here on the screen. You can let your kids kind of run around and play in there. You're welcome to do that as well. Um, but this morning, just get ready. Let's celebrate this morning. Let's celebrate what God's done over the past 12 years here at Pathway. And in, in order to help us do that, I brought one of um, uh, Megan and I's uh, favorite people, Dan Pongratz right here. Uh, Dan and Laura are from the Indiana District of the Assemblies of God. We're part of the Assemblies of God Fellowship. And uh, Dan and Laura have been a part of, uh, been here many times a as a church, here with our church. But I, I've asked him just to come and greet us uh, from the Indiana District of the Assemblies of God and open us in prayer this morning. Would you join Dan as he leads? Go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. We're just so excited to be here this morning on this great day. Uh, we love your pastor and Megan and uh, so thankful for who they are, their integrity. Uh, part of us, and uh, we're just honored to be here today. Uh, to give an idea of your pastor's heart and your leadership's heart, I don't know if you know this, but in the, the Indiana District, we encourage churches to contribute to plant churches just like this one, and uh, to contribute every month. And what's happened for your church in the last 12 years, I was telling the pastor this morning, this church has given over $82,000 to help plant new churches in Indiana. Isn't that so awesome? Give yourselves a hand this morning. And since, since you've been here, you have been involved in planting 30 more churches. So we thank the Lord. We're so grateful. Uh, I want to pray this morning. Let me read one scripture before I do. Uh, I believe this is just the beginning, again, of what God is going to do. This is Jeremiah 29, 11. And I think you know this scripture. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord has plans, Pastor. Yes. And I know you know what those are. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Can I say this morning, this isn't the end. There are, there are hundreds, there are thousands of people that still need Jesus. And I'm thankful for Pastor's heart and your heart as you continue to reach out. I still believe it's, it's a new day, new beginnings, new future. God does have a plan, and we want to tie into that this morning. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we're grateful today for your goodness and faithfulness. Father, thank you for men like Pastor Scott. Thank you for Megan and for the family and Lord, their commitment to come when there was nothing here. This is where it begins. And then for people to come alongside and, and share vision and reach out to the lost. Lord, we stand here today testifying of the goodness and the plans of God. Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless. Will you continue to reveal to Pastor the divine plan for this geographic area? And Lord, may you use them mightily, we pray. We thank you, Lord, today as we gather in this place. It's all about you, worshiping you, giving glory and honor to you. And thank you, Lord, for these precious people who are going to give their hearts, their hearts, their lives, all they have, Lord, committed to you today. Yes, Lord. Accomplish your divine purpose. Bless pastor and this leadership team, we pray, as they lead us into the future. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Hey, um, we have a, a quick video I wanted you to watch from the previous uh, uh, church development director who's now pastoring a church in Kokomo. His name's uh, Randy Blankenship. He sent a video just to help us celebrate 12 years and shared uh, some of the early story. Can we uh, play that? Watch this real quick. Hey there, everyone at Pathway. This is Randy Blankenship. It's a privilege for me to congratulate you on 12 years of ministry as a church family there in Middlebury. A couple of things stand out in my mind. I remember when Pastor Scott came to my office in Indianapolis when I was the church development director, 
and began to tell me about his vision for planting a church in your area. And it was an honor to be a part of that process. And uh, a lot of that vision has come to pass, and yet there's still more in Pastor Scott's heart that I'm sure is going to come to pass. I also remember standing with you on the property and breaking ground for a portion of the building in which you now sit. together today for, for the, the, the fact that this land has been obtained and all that have given and all that have donated so that this property is deeded to Pathway Assembly of God. Occasionally taking visits up there to see your progress and watch how some of you work so hard to see that the, the facility got to where it is today. I know, though, that this is more about just one man, and it's more more than just about uh, um, buildings and budgets and facilities. This is about people's lives, and many lives have been changed because you have worked together as a family to minister to so many people in Middlebury. And I pray God's continued blessings on you as you continue to be used of Him to reach your community. God bless you. Hey, we had one more video I wanted to show before we jump into worship, and that's from uh, some of our strategic missions partners. You know that missions is a heart of, uh, uh, is a heart of the gospel, and it's our heart. And uh, so some of our strategic missions partners took just 30 seconds, a minute, to just come and greet you via video. Let's watch these real quick before we jump into worship. I'll be right back to say something before you. Hey, Pathway Assembly God, I just want to say thank you for your partnership for the past uh, 12 years, and uh, congratulations on your anniversary. You guys have a great pastor, Pastor Scott. Man, I love you, bro. And uh, you guys, um, I hope, will continue to grow and succeed in God's kingdom and building, uh, not just reaching souls where you're at, but building a kingdom with world missions and U.S. missions around the world. God bless you, and you all have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Hello. This is Todd Tyson. I want to send greetings from our team in Paris, France with the Bridge International Church. We wanted to say congratulations on your 12th anniversary there at Pathway. Uh, we love you all so much and we're so grateful for the impact you're making not only in northern Indiana but around the world in cities like Paris. And we know that the next 12 years will be even more amazing still in the previous 12 years. So congratulations, we celebrate with you today. Hello Pathway, and happy 12th anniversary. You know, when the church was started, and even now, its vision is to have a profound impact in Middlebury, in Elkhart County, in the region, and ultimately around the world. Well, we're so grateful to be a part of what you're doing, having that profound impact. Linda and I just got back from Europe. I was in the Czech Republic and in Slovakia working with Rome families. And Linda was in Moldova, where she and her team have been asked to come and provide training for a ministry on the front lines in the fight against human trafficking. You know, there's some things that are just absolutely true in this day. Number one, our world is broken. Number two, people are searching. And number three, God is still the answer. That's our message, that's your message. And so in partnership together, I believe that God has brought us to this point, to this time, to have that profound impact. Linda and I want to thank you out of a grateful heart for all that you do in finance, in prayer, and in your support. God bless you. I want to You know, uh, right before service, in fact, I was thinking, let's get this number together. And Matt and I were working feverishly, uh, trying to figure out over the past 12 years, how much money have you given to foreign and home missions? How much money over the past 12 years has this body, just this church, this body right here, how much have we given to support missionaries to go all around the world and, and accomplish Acts chapter 1, verse 8? I'm wondering if you could guess. I'm not going to give you a chance because we've got to keep moving. But if you'd guess, just get a number in your brain. The past 12 years, you have given almost $900,000 away. And then stand up with me. Stand up with me. Let's give God praise for that. Guys, let's go. Let's go. That's awesome. Praise God. Praise God for that. Praise God. I want you just to join the worship team right now as we come and worship God for what He's done through us and in us. Let's worship Him together. Oh, I'm
trading and I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm lifting down the joy of the Lord Do you have joy? I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm lifting down the joy of the Lord You are good. You are good. 
Bless the Lord, yes Lord, and bless the Lord, oh my soul, and oh my soul, worship his holy name. Lift your voices, lift it up, sing like never before, and oh my soul, I worship your holy The sun comes up, the sun comes up, it's a new day, darling, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, yes, Lord, let me be singing with thee. Rich 
in love You're rich in love And you're slow to anger Your name is great And your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on back to bless the Lord. Here we go. Bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless the Lord. never before, sing like never before, and oh my soul, I worship your holy name, I worship, worship your holy name, last time, I worship your
take this offering. Take this offering that I bring. Humbly I fall on my knees to proclaim your every thing. My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You are my sustaining love. I live. I live. Church, worship him. All I am, worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bowing down in spirit. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Sing that again.
worshiping you bowing down in spirit and truth in hands worshiping you come on sing it i'm gonna worship you forever i'm gonna worship you come on just declare this hallelujah my life is lived as worship to you i'm gonna worship Oh, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Sing it again. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. Because I love you, Lord. I glorify you. I magnify you. I exalt you, Lord. I extol you, Lord. There is none like you. We exalt you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. One more time. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you. Once again, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm gonna... Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Worshiping you. With all I am. that through just play it through come on come on all over the house right now just worship the Lord in your own words right now come on we glorify you God we magnify you Lord we worship you we worship you holy holy worthy worthy we glorify Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. Just press in and worship. We glorify you, God. We magnify you. I will sing with my spirit. I will sing with my mind. I glorify you, God. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Your word, your word. Come on, if God's done something in your life the past 12 years here through Pathway, can you just speak that out right now to God and just say thank you for that thank you for saving me through this church come on just express that right now thank you for encouraging thank you for my life group leader who came alongside and just at the right moment encouraged me thank you for stretching me thank you for that day when I got baptized here thank you for that day when I yielded my life to you God thank you for bringing me to this house thank you for bringing me to this church hallelujah Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's with a thankful heart we honor you, God. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. You know, on the screen right now, I don't want to interrupt your worship. You can continue to do that. But on the screen right now are a list of names. These are people that some now attend our church, as you can see. But before this church even had a first service 12 years ago on December the 3rd, 2000, in about August of 2000, we got several families, several, there's about 20, 25 families to come alongside us almost like a missionary. And we said, would you pray with us? Would you believe God for us? Do you know that what happened over the past 12 years wasn't by chance? It was all Holy Spirit driven by prayer. These people were praying for your marriage, praying for your soul, even before you stepped into this building or into the garage. Isn't that something? I thought, I just want to take a moment 
throw these names up on the screen as we go to prayer. And I just, we're going to take time just to pray for them. That the seeds that they sown in prayer, God would just bless them and encourage them and uplift them for, for, the, for the time they put into praying for all of this. <laughs> I know you walked in here today too and there's things on your heart. Whatever that may be, I just want to remind you, God is still on the throne. He loves you. He cares for you. He knows exactly what you're walking through today. And He wants to meet you at the point of your need. Can we pray right now? Come on, would you join me as we pray right now? Let's pray in course. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for 12 years of ministry here at Pathway. Thank you for what you've done. God, we thank you for the names that are on the screen right now. God, every single one of them, God, we thank you that they sowed in prayer. They prayed. They came alongside. And I'm sure it probably wasn't like an everyday 24-hour thing. But every once in a while, when they got the monthly newsletter or when, when there was an email or something sent out, they thought, okay, yeah, i got to pray. And they prayed. And God, the, what we see today didn't just happen. It's because of prayers of faithful believers like these people. And God, as a church right now, we just ask right now that you would just multiply blessing on their marriages, on their lives, on their children, on their jobs. Right now, those that prayed for us. God, we pray for them right now. God, encourage them, uplift them. I just pray that you do something great through every church that came alongside us and said, yeah, we're, we're going to believe God to do a great thing through Pathway in Middlebury. God, thank you for that. And Lord, I want to pray right now. Come on, saints. I want to pray for people who are here this morning. They walked in here today with just real heavy needs. God, you are able to do um, uh, amazing things. We see it in Scripture and we see it in our lives. And so, God, right now we come before you and we make our requests known to you. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, anyone here today that's sick with your stripes, by your stripes, I am healed. And I ask right now in the name of Jesus that sicknesses and diseases would be healed right now by the blood of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for marriages right now to be restored. I pray for divine miracles in financial needs. God, every area, God, you see what's happening. People need jobs. People need, uh, there's all kinds, people have just their kids, something's happening in their kids' lives. It's breaking them apart. God, I ask right now, healing and restoration of relationships, Lord. God, we just give you praise and give you thanks. As we pray these things, we pray it in faith. We see it before we see it, God. We pray in faith and we thank you, God, that marriages are restored. We thank you that souls are saved. We thank you that lives are changed, God, right now. We just declare it right now by faith. Thank you for that when we pray, it moves your hand, Lord. And we bless you and thank you for that, God. Lord, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, would you just continue as we continue on in our celebration mode this morning. Just grace us with your presence change lives even here today Lord in the name of Jesus we pray and everyone said amen amen can you take five seconds to turn around and just greet the person behind you and then be seated Every Saturday in December, remember, we're serving at the local food pantry here in Middlebury. Every Saturday we're serving. Different groups of us are serving. Yesterday they served somewhere around 140 to 150 different families. We were a part of it. So praise God for that. If you, if you were a part of that, um, bless you. Remember, if you signed up to serve this Saturday, be there. Good stuff. I'm sure Jason's going to say something more about that. Hey, good morning. Welcome once again to Pathway. I am Jason Brooks. I'm the Connections Pastor here. we got just a few quick announcements, and we're going to continue on with our celebration service. Uh, Scott hit on the one. Uh, we're serving at the Middlebury Food Pantry all month. You'll get a call or an email from Shane Kripe just reminding you, whether it's a Wednesday night, maybe it's cookies, or the Saturday morning serving, please put it on your calendars. Make sure you know uh, when you're serving so you can be there. 150 families is awesome, and I, my guess is that's just going to continue throughout the month each Saturday, uh, blessing those families. Hey, if you do me a favor while I'm going through these announcements, grab the yellow card that's in front of you, please. Take an opportunity now to, to fill those out, put your name on there, uh, any contact information that we may not have. Again, if your email's on there, we'll sign you up for the weekly update, let you know what's going on here at Pathway. And when the offering bag comes by here in just a few moments, you can drop that yellow card in there.
Uh, one other announcement that we have, uh, if you have started attending Pathway, say over the last four, five, six months, you're, you're relatively new here, you may not even know if this is going to be your church home yet. We want to invite you out Sunday uh, the 16th, let me make sure I get that right, yeah, Sunday the 16th, right after service, we're going to meet up in the great room. And it's where the kids are now. We're going to clear them out, kick them out of there, set up some tables, and have some pizza, some pop, just hang out for, to give you guys an opportunity to meet myself, Pastor Scott, Pastor Matt, and just hear just a little bit about what Pathway is about and really just to connect with you. So please, honestly, you may just be, I don't know if I even want to come back. Well, come back for free pizza. We can buy you back with cinnamon rolls. We can buy you back with pizza. And then we have exercise programs in order to keep that uh, going on. But mark that on your calendar as well. One last thing, speaking of pizza and cinnamon rolls, we have a lot of cinnamon rolls left over. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sell them for a low, low price of nothing. You want a cinnamon roll, you grab one on the way out. You want a dozen, you take it home to your life group, you eat them up. Okay? You want a whole box, you take it. That's my son. He's <laughs> saying stuff that might not be true, which is a surprise. Um... Hey, we'd like to take this time and uh, bring the offering, bring the tithe. So ushers, if you'd come. Guys, it is no doubt that over the past 12 years, we couldn't do this without your support. Uh, you know, we hear missionaries say it, and sometimes we just need to hear it for ourselves. We operate because you guys bring the tithe. We, we, we are able to bless. There was a family this week that called in and said, I don't have food, I don't have money, I don't have anything. Uh, and a lady was here cleaning, and I had the opportunity to send her to get some groceries because you guys give. There was you know, money in our budget to give and bless that family with a meal, bless that family with groceries. But it goes above and beyond that. Obviously, everything we do here uh, takes finances. And thank you for your support. Thank you for just being obedient to not us, but to the word. So we want to ask you to continue to do that. If you're a guest with us, you, know, you can let the bag go. Don't feel obligated to give. But anybody that gives, know that it goes just to further what we're doing here and around the world uh, to touch lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to give. We thank you that we know that you bless the gift and the giver. And God, we just ask right now, God, we pray for the next 12 years. God, our finances today are going to continue to set the foundation for what you're going to do through this church. God, and you're going to stretch us. You're going to stretch those that are going to challenge us in a financial way. Above and beyond the 10%, God, you're going you're to just challenge us, Lord. And as we step up to that challenge, we're going to see blessings come over and above what we can even imagine, Lord. And I, I pray it through salvation. God, I pray it through lives changed, God, because of what's given here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, we have a, a video that we'd like to show you. We took a last few Sundays and just kind of asked you what Pathway means to you. So we have some highlights of those. So if you do me a favor, if you can pass the bag and drop your stuff in there and check out this video.
I met my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Pathway to Us is our home church that we're, we've been coming since the first weekend after we were married, and now it's a place where we can raise our family together. Same thing. <laughs> uh, for Jen and I, it's just been a real huge blessing. Uh, you know, we, we love everybody here, and we just feel like it's just something that, you know, God has brought us here for a reason. Uh, we consider it our home, and, uh, you know, just one of the things we really love about it is just the realness about Pathway, you know, our, our, our three theme, Get Real. Just Pathway lives that out, and, uh, you know, you know when uh, Pastor Scott or Pastor Jason or Pastor Matt, when they bring the message, you just know they're going to bring it, and it's going to be real. Just the realness of that staff. And, uh, been such an important part of our family's spiritual growth to know that there's people here that have poured into our kids who have helped them grow spiritually has been just a tremendous blessing to my wife and, and uh, also the free coffee you can't beat that um, you know sometimes I think coffee is essential to, to life and uh, you know not, not as much as Jesus but the second Distant second, but you know, so the fact that there's free coffee and that you get to take it in the sanctuary is here, so. I'll say more about him in a second, but uh, my, I, I'm sorry I had to throw that in there, Matt. I apologize in front of everybody. Okay, I'm over it now. <laughs> that was great. Hey, um, I hope you enjoyed just hearing from one another uh, what Pathway means. I wanted to take just a few moments, um, and uh, believe you me, I, you know me, I'm a preacher. I, I'm just going to keep my comments short. I'm at the very end, so I promise, but... <laughs> There's a few of our guests that, um, uh, that we have with us, and one of them uh, I want to introduce to you now is Sean. Sean, would you come on up here? When, uh, when we started the church, um, uh, just a second, I'll give you a chance to, to, to show your appreciation to him. But when we started the church, we were in the process mode of putting a team together, of, uh, and there was this young fella who was a college student at Bethel College, connected with, and uh, somehow he bought into the vision and what we were wanting to do here, and and so from day one, even before we had a service, Sean was with us, is with us for, um, I don't know, seven years, eight years, something like that. Um, but just my, uh, my rank of guy. The thing about Sean is every, I'll tell you what every leadership team needs. Come here, Sean. Every, every staff, every leadership team needs somebody to ask the one question. You know, you're sitting in the room, and you're like, oh, this is great. And then someone asks the one question, it's like, oh. And Sean was that guy in a good way. <laughs> because... 
He always looked at things just a little differently, and there were things that we did a lot differently simply because he tossed out that question, and it was the right question at the right time, and just really appreciate my brother, Sean Ma He's not my physical brother, but my brother in the Lord, Sean Moss. Church, can you honor and show uh, appreciation for Sean today? I love you, bro. Hey. It's, uh, it's, it's good to be back. It's good to see all of you. And, you know, one of the things I, as, you know, watching the video, one of the themes that kept coming up again and again and again is this, you know, I, I love Pathway because it's, you know, it's like my family. And, you know, just coming back here, it does feel like that. We are family. You know, even though we're from different families, we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And it's, it's good to be back here this morning. Uh, Pastor Scott asked me to, uh, you know, just share about what Pathway meant to me. He also said to keep it short. And uh, I'm going to try, although that hasn't really been a problem for me most of my life. And at five foot four, I can almost guarantee you I will be the shortest one up here this morning. Um, like Pastor Scott said, um, I got involved with Pathway even before we had public you know, services uh, in December of 2000. I was in, in college. And just looking back over the past 12 years, uh, I can just tell you my heart is filled with gratitude. There are so many things that I'm so grateful for. And uh, most of those are the relationships and the people and the friends that were made over those 12 years and the relationships that have come about. Uh, and the thing is, we've had a lot of good times together, um, whether it be with the staff, with different people here in the church. There's so many good, fun, lighthearted memories I can think of. Um, but it was more than just that. There's all kinds of stories I could tell that, you know, about this or that or whatever. But it was more than just the fun times. Uh, for me, as I think back over my years here at Pathway, one of the things that keeps coming that I kept thinking about over and over as I was just kind of thinking about this service was that here at Pathway, it wasn't just about let's get together and have fun. It wasn't just about let's get together and, you know, just do this church thing. And, and in fact, I was... Is there a second page? Okay. I remember, one of the things I remember about being here at Pathway is every Sunday there would be this uh, order of service, order of service, and at the bottom, Pastor Scott would always put this little phrase, always. It didn't matter. For the eight years that I was here, and I'm sure it, it's happened since then because I saw it in the email this week, at the end of every order of service, after the agenda for the day, there would always be this line that would say, all subject to change by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's one of those things that I remember from my time at Pathway. This wasn't just a church. This wasn't just a group of people who came and did this church thing and, okay, well, let's, let's move on. This was a group of people. We were a group of people who wanted to see God move in our lives, and we wanted to see him lead us in whatever he wanted to do. We didn't know what it was, and as we were meeting the garage, we had no idea where this was going to go. But we knew that we wanted God to lead us, and then we moved here and, you know, whether it be in the prayer meetings or whether it be in seasons of prayer and fasting, there was that desire in our hearts to see God lead us. And that's one of those things that I take away and I'm so grateful for as I look back over the years that I spent here at Pathway. I was so grateful to be part of a church family that wanted to see God move in their lives, that wanted to see God lead them. Whatever that looked like, we didn't care. We wanted to see Him lead us. Those, that was one of the things I was grateful for. One other thing that I was grateful for... Uh, during my time at Pathway was, let's face it, it was here at Pathway that I met my wife. And, you know, the Bible says, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, and whoever wrote that wasn't kidding, you know. And, you know, I, I was here throughout most of my 20s here at Pathway, and I know many of you who were here, you saw me, and I know some of you probably were like, man, we need to find Sean a girl, you know. And I'm sure many of you were praying, and even some of you were trying to help the process along. And I, you know, I really appreciate the sympathy and the thought. Um, but the Lord, the Lord was gracious. And in the right time, he saw fit to bring Lacey and her family from a far and distant land. And it was here at Pathway that we met. And, you know, eventually uh, we got married and the rest is history. But of all, as I think back, I am so grateful. I am so blessed. And even though Lacey and I are not living here in this community now, even though we're not a part of this fellowship, you know, here in Middlebury, Know that our prayers and our hearts are with you. And we are so excited just to see what God has done. And as I was sitting there singing and, and looking around and just soaking this in this morning, it's like, wow, thank you, Lord, 
for what you've done. From the humble beginnings 12 years ago, thank you for what you've done. Not just buildings and budgets, but in the lives of so many people. And just know that we are grateful to be a part of it. We are filled with joy this morning, and we are also um, excited to see what God continues to do here at Pathway in this community. Thank you for your time. Back to you, Pastor Scott. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, bro. I love that guy. Uh, Keith, come on up here. Um, uh, we had that. Thank you, Sean. Uh, we, we love you, my brother. Um, Keith, uh, it was actually Keith and Lacey um, uh, were one of our missionaries. And, and let's go back even further. Keith and I went to youth camp together back when we were teenagers and uh, ended up in college together. And, um, and he was, they were missionaries at the time. One of our missionaries, one of our first missionaries we ever supported, um, and I called him, just said, hey, do you know anyone that's, we're looking for a student ministries pastor, a youth pastor, and you know anyone? And uh, they, I don't remember what he said, but I know this, a little bit later on, uh, like a, uh, that day even, I don't remember, the day or the next day, he calls me back, uh, would you consider us? And, um, and I hung up the, the, the phone, and I went downstairs, and I looked at Megan, and I said, I think the Holy Spirit just found our youth pastor for us. And um, Keith, Keith and Lacey were with us for almost five years. Was it five years? I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, he's always looked a lot cooler than me, but I don't get jealous, so it's, it's okay. But no, I, I love this family, love these guys, and uh, if you get a chance, greet them. I know they're going to have to run pretty quick after service, but can you honor and welcome Keith Grable, a previous youth pastor. Thanks, bro. Give me a hug. I love you. Wow, so great to be back. Our family is just, you know, filled with memories as we drove down here and then even this morning driving to the church, driving through Middlebury a little bit. Uh, just thinking back, you know, this is where our kids had, you know, five years of their lives and thinking about neighbors that we've met and prayed for and thinking about all of you. I mean, and I don't just say this because I'm standing up here and I'm supposed to, but seriously, sincerely, you know, we think Scott and Megan and Jason and Sarah and Matt and Courtney and Sean and Lacey and, and so many of you that we've already had a chance to talk with this morning are some of the best people on the planet. And we feel honored that we were able to partner in ministry here for five years. I mean, that, wow. We look back at this and just see God's hand all over it. Uh, thinking back, so many memories, and some of my favorite memories, I think, are just having conversations with many of you. You know, praying with some of you, having that opportunity. Talking with students before and after services, staying late and just talking through their issues and what they're going through and praying with them, seeing students come to know Jesus and fill with the Holy Spirit. I mean, great, great, great memories. Uh, moving about a billion chairs in this, in this room over the years, um, every, every couple days. And, and I remember uh, one time, I don't know if staff pastors are supposed to do this, but Jason and I didn't know any better, and so we took an air horn, and Pastor Scott was studiously at his computer writing a blog to bless the church, and uh, Jason and I reached around the corner with an air horn, and and uh, I played basketball with this guy before, and I did not know he had that kind of ups. Seriously. <laughs> we have great memories. And I was praying a couple days ago for this service and for, for all of you. And I just asked the Lord, Lord, is there anything that you would have me to say? Because I come up here and tell some stories. But is there something that you want me to drive down here to say? And a verse that came to my heart immediately was from 2 Corinthians. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that word freedom means to omit the things of life that do not pertain to salvation. And as I think back to 12 years uh, that you all have had here at Pathway, um, I see there's a lot of action of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there's been a lot of freedom. Uh, for Lacey and I was coming to this place, and I experienced while I was here freedom from past hurt. Lacey experienced freedom from fear. And thinking and looking across this crowd, seeing so many of you, so many of you have had freedom from your past and hurt and offenses and freedom from sicknesses and freedom from sin and freedom from um, tradition and freedom from religion and just freedom. And I, I think back to one specific Sunday morning. Hopefully you don't have this planned again like next week and I ruined it. But um, Pastor Scott preached on baptism and water. And I remember sitting right over here and he gave the opportunity for people to be baptized, and many people were not prepared for that. Some were, and they were baptized, but then he gave the challenge, hey, if you're ready to make that statement that I stand with Jesus, and I've come into relationship with Jesus, uh, just to come on up and to be baptized. And I've never seen that in a church, and it says something about the freedom of this church. People began to get up in their dress clothes, in their jeans, and whatever they were wearing, 
begin to walk up and were immersed in water, making a public statement that they stand with Jesus. And I tell you what, that says something about this church. It says that there's a freedom from, from being churchy and having churchiness. There's a freedom to be real. And there's a freedom to keep the main thing the main thing. It's all about him, right? Yeah. It's all about him. And so we're thankful to be here. And if I could just throw this out, many of you have experienced freedom in your life and continue to touch Middlebury in this community with that freedom, the freedom that comes from Jesus Christ. Pastor Scott, thanks. Amen. Thank you, Keith. Good stuff. Matt, come on up here. Hey, I want to give a chance to Matt and Jason just to share their favorite pathway stories. But if you, if you don't know, Matt's our student ministries pastor. Right now he's overseeing even more than that. does some of our administrative stuff. And I love him very much. He's a good fella. Um, and I hope he's not mad at me for putting that picture in there. But, um, but Matt, Matt's family actually started attending our church. Uh, that maybe, I don't want to steal his thunder, but the second Sunday of our church. Um, so it wasn't December 3rd, but it was December 10th, as I remember it. And uh, he was saved, and, and God just has done amazing things in Matt's life through this church. He is the fruit of this church. And, um, and when the opportunity came, it was just a Holy Spirit thing. Uh, Keith and Lacey had moved on to the land of the north, Michigan. And, uh, and Matt and Courtney were there, and it just was a natural fit. We hired them in to be our student ministries pastor. Can you honor and welcome <laughs> Pastor Matt? I love you, Matt. Thank you. Um, thanks so much. Um, Scott and I will have a conversation in the parking lot about that picture. After I was going to say, it's no mystery at this point when I started coming or what I looked like. And uh, thankfully, my wife did not know me at that point, or I may still be single. But um, yeah, I, I, I started coming here when I was in eighth grade. That's why I looked like that, right? It wasn't like I was a grown man who looked like that. But um, I started coming in eighth grade. Uh, for me, and like he said, honestly, this has been, um, my entire Christian life has been here through Pathway, really. Um, we were out of church for several years, and so when we started coming, I was in eighth grade. I mean, apart from little memories I have from being a little, you know, tyke in church, I didn't, you know, I didn't have that. I, I still a Christian home and all that, but, you know, I just thank the Lord for everything um, God has done in me through this church. Um, you know, I was a good kid, but I still needed Jesus, and I gave my life to Christ here in this church. I was baptized here in this church. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit here in this church. Um, just everything in my Christian walk and growth in that has been here in this church. And so I have lots and lots of memories, obviously, for being here for 12 years. Um, and um, I, you know, I won't tell all kinds of embarrassing stories about Scott, even though I should. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just wish I had a picture of him in eighth grade, then maybe this would be even. But, um, you know, I, I, all sorts of fun memories, loved all the times um, with everybody. Um, but, you know, as I was thinking through all this, um, just think about what Pathway has meant to me and me personally. Um, you know, I think back um, years, years and years ago, back in the, the, the beginning days when we first started the youth ministry, I was um, one of the only youths um, here. It was about four of us, and that was our youth group. And um, Sean, actually, Sean led that as well as Johnny Roppel, which is one of the goofy-looking guys on one of the videos. Um, but they, they led that, and I, I remember back um, years ago, and Sean may remember this now, um, but... I remember one time Sean took me out. He took me out to um, a fancy dinner at McDonald's. And, um, no, I think we met at McDonald's or somewhere. And he, he, he gave me this book. This, I think it was a John Maxwell book or some, some kind of leadership thing. And he'd, he talked to me and said, hey, I'd like to, um, you know, kind of go through this. I see leadership in you. And basically that was the conversation. I see leadership in you. I think God has, has placed that on you. And, and I'd like to, um, you know, talk about that. And all that. Um, we never met again, but um, <laughs> but Sean, bless his heart, years later he came to me. I remember um, he came to me one time and said, "Hey, we started a conversation. We never really finished. I mean, just about all that." And you know, honestly, though, I say that I do not fault Sean at all for that. That was the beginning of many, many people and times where people looked at me and said, "Man, God has something for your life. I see leadership in you, and I want to pull that out. I want the things that God has put in your life. I want, I want Him to do awesome things through that." And from Sean to Keith, Scott, so many people looking at me and saying, "There's some God has something for you." I mean, um, Scott, Scott um, felt there was a call of ministry in my life before I ever did, and he didn't tell me. He told my dad, which probably made my dad really happy to have a secret about me, but 
I mean, they, they saw that in me and wanted to pull that out. And I see that, I see that theme in pathway throughout throughout my life, in other people's lives. Many of you might be sitting there knowing that maybe Jason or Scott or Keith or Sean or myself or somebody has come to you and said, man, there's, God has given you something and you need to use it for him because he, he gave it to you for him to further his kingdom and do awesome things. Or maybe some of you, it's been a call to ministry. Maybe some of you, it's just been um, some gifts and talents, maybe through worship and other things. And that is just a running theme, I think, in Pathway. You know, we talk about it some sometimes now, you know, with leadership and those things, but for 12 years, that has been that has been spoken into my life. For 12 years, someone looked at me and said, even if I was this um, really cool kid that um, was, maybe I had a lot of doubts, a lot of things going on, they still looked at me and said, man, God has something for you. And I, I tell you, for me, Pathway is invaluable. I mean, I can't um, look back on my 12 years and say I would be where I am today without Pathway. My call to ministry was through this church. It was a process through many people speaking in my life and me just finally saying, God, I submit to you and I'll, I will um, do ministry for you. And this church is invaluable to me. And um, guys, I love all you guys. I appreciate you. I appreciate any one of you who have spoken into my life. I know there's times where people have come up to me and said, man, God um, spoke this to me and wants me just to tell you that, encouragement, those things. And I just thank you for being a church like that. I thank you um, for what you've done over the last 12 years. But I just, I'm thankful that this church is going to continue to do that over the next 12 years and beyond that to look at people and say, get, there's something more in you that God has given you and we want to help pull that out and make you a disciple of Christ. And now I was made a disciple of Christ here in this church and I just, I just love this church and I love you guys and I hope you appreciate the leadership of this church maybe your life group leaders, your pastors, anybody else who has looked at you and said, there's more that you can do for Christ. And you may have found them annoying because Jason kept calling you, but <laughs> man, they do it because they see more in you and they're going to continue, continue to call you out and say, you can do something for Christ more than what you think you can do for Christ. So thank you so much, guys. And that's what I have to say. Thank you, Matt. Good stuff. Jason, come. No, uh, right before Megan and I come and kind of um, conclude this, uh, I want Jason to come, uh, our Connections pastor here. Most of you know this. Jason and I grew up together. Um, I remember in our youth group, it was the cool thing to be called in the ministry. And so everyone's getting called in the ministry. I'm called. You called. I'm called. You called. I'm called. And I think the one thing about Jason is like, am I called? And he's like, I don't think so. I don't know. And so he didn't, he didn't go to Bible college. He didn't do it. But he went by way of... I didn't go to college. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he came in the ministry by way of Dutchman, and, um, and for like 11 years, um, I, he might even, I don't want to steal the center, but in 03, I believe it was, he and Sarah and the kids, um, at least one of them started attending here at Pathway, and it was really quick. We saw the giftings and the calls on Jason's life, and it was through conversations that he joined our staff in 07, wasn't it? 06, 07? Yeah, somewhere yes. in there. And, uh, and Jason, Jason is, in a sense, um, uh, you know, if... Just I can't do what I do without these guys, without Jason and Matt. But I wanted Jason just to take a few moments just to share, just a few moments um, uh, to share before um, uh, Megan and I come and kind of conclude this. But uh, can you honor and show your appreciation for Pastor Jason? Uh, well, we all got the same email to share a story or two for a few minutes. And, you know, honestly, uh, my thoughts are similar to Sean's, where I could uh, stand up here for a long time and share stories that are funny. Um, I, it was not me with the air horn and Keith that uh, I, I would never do anything like that. You guys know me. Um, just kidding. But there, there are tons of stories. But, you know, as I thought about it, um, the overwhelming thing for me and for Sarah, um, luckily I'm not the crier of the four that have spoke this morning is the lives that we see changed. Uh, we had an opportunity last night to share Sarah and I with some of the, the elders and, and Pastor Scott and Matt and their wives and stuff. And, uh, you know, Sarah's thought was similar. Just seeing lives change, seeing kids grow up here at Pathway and choose in Christ. You know, we were worshiping, and I walked back, and I stood in the stand, uh, sound booth, and, and I just watched, and I saw your kids worshiping. I, I saw the Roth boys over here clapping and looking and they were worshiping. I saw, uh, you know, kids singing the lyrics to the songs 
And that's what it's about, change lives. It's from children to adults. I sat across people at lunch or breakfast or dinner and heard their stories of challenges and of pain and saw what, what he talked about, the freedom in their lives through Christ to choose him. And let me explain something to you this morning. In Romans, it talks about the righteousness of God. And it's available, but it's available through those who choose him. Let me make it real clear. Just because I'm on staff here and me and my wife serve Christ does not mean it gives a free ticket to Ryan and Jade to be followers of Christ. They have to choose Christ. And over the last seven, eight, nine years that we've been coming here, I've seen people choose Christ. I, I've seen, I, I've been able to hear their stories of, of, you know, tough things in their marriage, tough things in their kids. I've preached funerals. I've seen funerals. I've seen weddings. I've seen births. But the thing that comes over, just like a covering over the whole thing, is that pathway gives an opportunity for you to choose Christ. We can't force it on anybody. But as I've seen the change, it's blown me away. And I, I am, you know, we can look at all that pathway does. You can call them ministries. You can call them programs. I don't really care what you call them. But know this, from Pastor Scott to myself to Matt to the elders and the people on the leadership team here, the vision of Pathway is to see your lives changed. And if that stops, then what we have going, whether it's a ministry or a program or whatever name you give it, it's got to change. And I, I don't know what Scott saw in me. I remember sitting out here at the little carport thing in his Jeep. I don't know if he went to lunch or whatever. And he looked at me and he said, hey, he said, you would be good. You would be an asset to the leadership team here at Pathway. And do you remember what I told you? No. That was, no, nope. You know, I said, I looked and I said, nope, that's not for me. I don't, I, 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 I've seen some church boards, how they run. I said, no. I didn't say I'm going to, some of you have said, oh, I'm going to pray about it. You already know the answer is no. I just said, listen, no, I'm not, no way. But he pulled stuff out. The Holy Spirit began to work on me. And it was, I had to make a choice, just like all of you here. And here in just a second, we're going to play a, a, a baptismal video. And it's the power of a life change. That baptism did not save this individual that's getting baptized. It's a proclamation of who Christ is in their life. It's a proclamation that I chose that. Because of the opportunity offered to me through kids' ministry, through 365, through life groups, through Sunday morning services, through Pathway, my life is changed. And that's what excites me about it. So in just a second, we're going to play that video. But I, I want to do one thing. This is a plan that's not on the order of the service, so maybe this falls under the heading of being led by the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I want to invite the elders to come. This was my, my idea. They asked for just a few minutes. So we have a leadership team made up of elders. Josh Nice, uh, Gary Kripe, and Arlen Ike are going to come. And just for a few minutes, I'm going to turn over them, and then we're going to check out that baptismal video. Josh, it's yours. All right. I've heard that head pastors don't like interruptions in the service, so we'll see how this goes. And, and I offered up the opportunity to speak to these guys, and they said, have at it. <laughs> I didn't know Gary was going to outdress me that bad. <clears throat> we as a leadership team wanted to take this opportunity. Each of us have been here a number of years. Gary's been here for quite a while, and Arlen and I have been here about five. But this church has meant a lot to each of us. And on the leadership team, we get to see the hearts poured out of, of Matt and Jason and Scott, all three, and the vision that they have for this place. And um, that's why we're still coming. We know where their heart is, we know what their vision is, and we're totally behind them. Um, we wanted to take a moment, so I don't know if Scott would allow himself to be honored, but we wanted to take a moment to honor him, but also the other couples as well. I didn't tell Jason that part. Um, at the end of the service today, we have a photographer that'll be here and I'd like to invite as many of you can to stick around after the closing. And uh, we'll just get a screenshot from here. And we've got a photo frame to commemorate this day for each of the three moving forward. Um, a day of celebration of memory and a day of promise for the future. Um, to Matt and Courtney, we want to honor and thank you for the investment you've made to us and our youth and in worship. When students want to be here because they have positive relationships, that's the bottom line, the relationships that you two have worked to form with those people. Families stay and we grow as a body. Thank you for your sacrifice as a couple. And to Jason and Sarah, our connectors. Jason, we acknowledge the effort you put into all you do, organizing, leading, and building relationships. And Sarah, the work you've done with the youth and children's ministries the last few years, starting in Elkhart and moving forward, you both have given a lot of time and energy to this church. 
many friendships have developed here through your work as a couple, through your friendship, fellowship. We honor you as a couple for your investment to us. And to Scott and Megan, you guys started it all. You're our pastors. You're our leaders. We thank you for following God's leading, stepping out into a, a new area, preaching the word. That's what brought us here. Not flowery music or anything else. It was the word of God that brought us here and kept us here. Growing a body that desires obedience. There's lots of places that just want to get by, but I know that we want what God's best is for us here. We desire righteousness and unity. You challenge us each week from wherever we are, helping us know God loves us, and as a father, he expects continued growth. Megan, all the behind-the-scenes work with the children, the women's ministries, other things, a lot of that doesn't get seen. Families, you know what she does, though. We appreciate all three of you as couples and all six of you as individuals, and we really want to honor you today for that. I'd like to invite each of the three couples forward just real quickly to have Gary pray over them. And like I said, we're going to present a, f a frame to each of them. But Gary, the three couples just come forward, and Gary's going to lead us in prayer over the three couples. You know, every, every well, not every week, but most weeks, Scott, I'm sorry, we're going to ask you to come down here. Um, they call you forward because they want to pray for you. They want to see something changed in you, they, whether it's a situation or, or whatever it is in your life. And you know what? Even us as, as leadership team, there's things that we don't see. But when you're hurting, they're hurting. When you're rejoicing, they're rejoicing. So there's things that we will never know that they have done in our behalf. So, again, we apologize for taking up this time. I hope it's not going to throw the schedule off too much. But we want to take this time, and we want to honor them in prayer. So if you will, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what this day means. We thank you for this celebration. Father, first of all, because of your gift of your son Jesus and what he did upon the cross. Father, we thank you for the word that you have given to us, a word that is alive and living, a word that transforms and changes, Father. But Father, right now we want to thank you and praise you for these men that are represented here. Father, for our pastors. Father, we thank you that you have given us good and godly men. Men that are full of courageousness. Father, pastors that are full of integrity. Father God, we thank you so much that they love you with all their hearts, that they love your word in, in an unmeasurable fathom, Father. Lord, we thank you that these are godly men, men that are seeking after you and searching after you to lead and to guide not just their lives and their families, but Father, this family of Pathway. Father, we thank you for those that have come before us, Father. Lord, those that, have, that have, have, have built the foundation. And, Father, we are reaping the benefit because of it. But, Father, right now, Lord, I pray for these, these holy men, Father. Lord, that you would just encompass them with your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, that you would continue to, to anoint them by your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would protect them, Father. Lord, that you would, you would protect them from temptations, Father. Lord, that you would guard their hearts, Father. Lord, because we realize that there is an enemy out there that wants to destroy and rob and steal and kill, Father. So, Father, right now we pray for our pastors. We pay, pray for our pastors' wives and their children, their families, Father. Lord, we just pray for your protection, Father, whether they're going or coming, Father. Lord, we pray that you would just go with them, Father. Minister to them, Father. Lord, when they feel like they don't have any strength left, Father, may your Holy Spirit just, just envelop them and, and, and surround them, Lord, and give them that, that strength, Father, to go on. 
Father, we pray for financial blessings. Father, I pray, Lord, that these pastors are never in want. But, Father, that you're always in continually meeting their needs, Father. Lord, may your peace and your love, Lord, rest upon their families and their homes. Lord, just continue to strengthen them, Lord. Give them grace and mercy each and every day, Lord, as they lead us. Father, we recognize as a congregation that we're not perfect. And Lord, so we just thank you, Lord, that as our pastors are able to look past our human frailties, Father. Lord, I thank you for their love, for their grace with each one of us, Father. Lord, we honor them today. Lord, in turn, we honor you. We give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Um, again, I know they wouldn't have let us do that necessarily, but we, we thought more than anything they deserved a, a moment to be recognized. Um, you know, Pastor Appreciation Month often comes and goes quietly in this church because these guys do their jobs in a humble fashion. Um, but we as a leadership team just wanted to invite you over the next few weeks just to drop them a card um, individually. You know, the things they've done for your kids, for you. Um, just a word of thanks. A note, let them know that we do appreciate them in this season of honor. Um, again, we have the frames here. The photographer will be here right after the service. So if you can, stick around. We'll get a group shot right here in the wow. sanctuary before we leave. And um, yeah. hey, Thanks, guys. Let's roll that video. Come here, guys. Come here. Hey. who you are. I'm Ryan Maiden. All right, Ryan, tell us a little bit of your story. Um, when was it that you gave your life to Christ? April 12, 2010. Right April, over there. April 12, 2010, right over there. Was it at a youth service? Yes, it was. Praise during God worship. for that. In the, during, worship. during worship. Go ahead. Give God praise. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> now, Ryan, I want you to tell me a little bit of your story. Um, uh, did you grow up in church? I did not. No. And what was it that drew you to Jesus? What was it? After being atheist for 16 years, I just couldn't go it alone anymore. It wasn't good. It was taking a toll on me. I wanted to kill myself. Yeah. Uh, just need someone, just need something to believe in. Yeah. God is the ultimate thing. Yeah. So, so you literally came to a point in your life where you're like, man, I just don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. I just don't. No, just nothing. And from what I understand, was even outspoken about that. Am I right? Yeah. 
And and then was it was it through your friendship with some of the, the kids um, in the in the student ministries that brought you here? Is that what brought you to Pathway the youth group the whole bit or? Yep, uh, Lindsey Kyle invited me to come here. And Brady Smith, my best friend, uh, yeah. talked with me about God. And they did some wonderful things in my life. They continue to do so. Yeah. So they didn't give up on you. So they started talking to you, sharing um, Christ with you, and um, uh, and they were befriended you. And through that friendship, um, they didn't give up on you. And uh, through that, you came to youth service. What was it that night over there at youth service that you you what what clicked? What happened that night that just made you think tonight I've got I've got to make this decision? Do you remember? I was angry with a lot of people, uh, including my parents that I really should have been happy about at the time, but things mm. weren't going the way I wanted to in life, and I just wasn't happy. Uh, it came to a point where I just gave up on everything, and I gave it all to Christ because I couldn't tolerate it myself anymore. And what has changed? What has changed now? And I, I know that your life is not perfect. Any of ours you know, will never be perfect. But can you have you noticed a difference since inviting Christ in, in, in what area of your life? Joy. Just been overall better. Yeah. It's been easier to tolerate. People have been better to me. I've had a lot of relationships that I need to make up for for doing horrible things in my past, but cool. it's just been overall happier. Great. I love it. I love it. Well, Ryan, I, we can all see the, the love of Jesus in your life, and we can see it in the, in the way you carry yourself, and, and we're excited to see what God has for you. And we're glad as a church to be able to pour into you and help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Am I right? Isn't that awesome? This is a changed life right here. God's good. Why don't you go ahead and cross your arms. Listen, Ryan, because of your profession of faith, of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your life is now changed. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. I had, uh, some of you know Ryan, some of you don't, but I, j I just, I was watching those videos, I, I was like, man, I have to just leave that whole video in there. Just a testimony, because that's exactly the heart of who we are as a church. It's about changed lives, seeing people come to know Jesus and being changed. Just real quick, I want to invite my dear wife, uh, Megan, to come and to share just for a minute. Then I'm going to come and kind of conclude things uh, with a closing thought and... and uh, but uh, if you've never met my wife before, this is my wife, Megan. And, um, uh, and I, uh, obviously, um, not only she's my wife, but she's also the, the pastor's wife here at Pathway. And she's uh, um, been with me from the very beginning. She's my first wife. <coughs> and, and my last. Maybe. Remember your grandpa used to always say that? No, I don't. Her, her grandpa used to always say, and this is my first wife, Lois. Um, and, uh, but, um, but you know what? You know this. You know what it's like being married. Everything you walk through, your spouse goes through as well. The great, exciting times, the low points. And so I just, I want you as a church, would you just take one moment before Megan comes and just talks for a second? And could you just honor her and show appreciation for her? Love you. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for that very thoughtful gift. That is very kind of you guys, and I appreciate that. And you guys are just a beautiful church. You just are. You're a beautiful group of people. And so I'm standing here today with you, and I have my speech typed out, so I'm going to kind of read it because I'm not going to off the cuff in memory talking. Um, hey, I was asking myself, though, how did this church happen? How did this group of people come to be together? Because 12 and a half years ago, this did not look like a possibility at all. Scott and I, we were living once again in a childhood room, namely mine. Thanks, Mom, for that. Um, we, were <laughs> we were cleaning toilets uh, to make enough money to buy food, and we had literally been told more than once that our resume was at the bottom of the list for any church out there. Uh, and we looked at each other and we thought, well, we're failures. <laughs> because this was not what we thought our life would look like when we graduated from Bible college and when we entered full-time ministry. And then one day, uh, through the wise counsel of two men who were further along in their faith than us, Mickey Davis and Charles Crank, 
the Holy Spirit began to whisper to us, plant a church. Why don't you plant a church? And this was never on the screen for us. Number one, we're not cool. I just want you to know that. I'll declare it out there right there. We're not edgy. We're not charming. We're not outstanding in any way that would seem to be able to attract crowds to us. And if you're going to start something from scratch, you want to be able to attract a crowd, right, more than just the two of you. And so we were well aware. This was not us. And our abilities were just middle of the road. We were average. So we answered God's call to us just like Moses did in the desert. You got the wrong couple, God. It's not us. <laughs> we're not for us. But the Holy Spirit kept whispering to us. And at the same time, as he often does in your life, I know you've experienced this, conveniently closed every other door, <laughs> every other possibility, shut down. And so we finally got it through our thick heads, the message, say yes. So we did. We said yes, and the Indiana district sent us to a church planter's boot camp intended to prepare us for our new journey. And as an added benefit, induced in both of us stomach troubles and panic attacks. <clears throat> because we were surrounded at that boot camp by the cool, by the edgy, <laughs> and by the charming and the obviously attractive. And intimidation and fear began to set in on us. And, we, and they said to us, like they always say to you, who do you think you are trying to do this? And so we went back to God and we said, are you sure about this? Because we could give you a list of people you might want to talk to instead. Because we can't do this. And the Holy Spirit came again and said, stop trying to figure it all out. Joshua couldn't understand my plan either for the destruction of Jericho, but he got up every day and he continued doing the last thing I had told him to do. And look what happened. I moved. So you get up every day and keep saying yes to me. And so we did. We kept saying yes. And it really was nothing more magical or well thought out than that. I wish I was smart enough to put all this together myself to make it work, but I am not. I wish I was talented enough to run numbers and have grand strategies like the people you buy books from who can run numbers and, and have grand strategies, but I'm not. I wish that we were charming enough to be able to attract a crowd to us, but we're not. And I just couldn't figure out why is God looking at us twice to do this? And it took a while for it to dawn on me, but it finally did because God was not looking for all of those things that I thought were necessary. He was looking for a yes. Now that 12 and a half years ago has brought much joy to our hearts and our homes. We started with one little girl and now we have three beautiful children that I see more and more every day as a blessing and inheritance as scripture calls children. They have the privilege of being part of a church family that is loving and supportive and continually seeking after Christ in his ways. And this is currently beneficial to them, but it is eternally beneficial to them. Pathway started in a garage and literally had kids' ministries in offices and under an awning of the display camper in the small showroom. And now there are classrooms painted and supplied to inspire imagination and joy so every kid that comes to our doors can immediately start hearing about the love of Jesus in an environment that is safe and loving. That's amazing. We started with 13 people. 13 people. We thought if we ever got to 30 on a Sunday, we would be great. But God brought more than that because he is a God of multiplication. I've told you Scott and I's journey of saying yes, but those first 13 people said yes too. They said yes to leaving a church they were familiar with, yes to giving of their time, talent, and treasure to see what God would do with it. And from those first yeses, because he is a God of multiplication, he was able to multiply that into a flood of yeses over the years. Yeses from people who had never heard of or said yes to Jesus before, people you might be sitting next to today, people in this community, yes in this county, and yeses from nations all around the world. Yeses from most of us here today. Yes, I'll serve there. Yes, I'll lead that group. Yes, I'll be responsible for that. Yes, I'll give. Yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll pray. Yes, I hear the message of God's word and I'm responding. Yes, I'll work on my marriage. Yes, I'll repent from that sin. Yes, I'll parent and teach my kids. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't that amazing that God does not look at any of us and say, well, I'm not going to ask them because they're not fill in the blank. They're not cool enough. They're not charming. They're not in the right group. They're not smart enough. They're too weird. Their mistakes are too great. They really don't have much going for them at all. No, God does not look at us that way because when God looks around for someone that he wants to work through, he looks for a person with a yes. That's it. Why? Because he doesn't worry about our shortcomings and mistakes. He's big enough to take care of those. 
He just needs a yes. And I'm so grateful today that God was not limited by our talents or treasure or charm or ability. He was not limited by our self-doubt or feelings of insecurity. He was not limited by our pain. The only thing that could have limited God 12 and a half years ago is the same thing that limits him today, and that is a no. And so, Pathway, I want to challenge you this morning As we celebrate and rejoice in the fruit of all those combined yeses over the years, our yes and all of your yeses, let's keep saying yes. When God shows up and begins to lead us and direct us, let's not hesitate. Let's make our yeses more bold and more resounding. And when doubt and intimidation begin to speak to us and ask us, who do you people think you are? Let's rise up with one voice and say, we are God's people. And we say yes. Thank you, Mary. Wow. Thank you, Mayan. Hey, how can I say more than that, huh? Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking around, uh, and I, I dare not start saying names because I'm going to miss some, but Janet's here, Janet. Uh, Martin was a part of us back in the garage days. I did see Gene Kripe and Larry. I think they took off. Um, but uh, my mother-in-law, Cheryl, is over here in the front row. And I'm not going to make her stand up because I don't want to embarrass her. But everyone look over here. <laughs> <laughs> the front row over here in the corner, Cheryl and Sean Moth, but Cheryl and Sean are two of the, uh, th- they were a part of that original 13. And I often say um, Cheryl came to help us start the church, but she didn't have a choice. She, her and, and Megan's father, they live over in Elkhart, and so it's like, you have to come to Pathway. Sorry. Um, uh, but uh, I, we honor you, Cheryl, um, as well as being there in the early days at all the events that we had, if not just to make us feel good and to see your granddaughter. So, um, uh, but we honor her. Worship team, would you come? Hey, 12 years ago, Check this out. If they, if they can get all souped up and ready, um, and you can watch me at the same time. But tw- it'd be good. 12 years ago, I shared a message with this church from Matthew chapter 7. The wise man built his house upon the rock. <laughs> the rains came. No, no, we're not going to sing that, but I got it in. Um, but that's the passage of Scripture. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. There was two groups of people. Jesus was saying there's two two groups here. There's the wise and there's the foolish. Both of them heard the word of the Lord. And Jesus was saying, listen, in this parable, those who hear the word and implement it, put it into practice, it's like the guy who built the house on the rock, the firm foundation. And, 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 And that's who I challenged 12 years ago. I challenged this church. Let's build our marriages, let's build our lives, and let's build this church on the firm foundation, not of Scott Miller, not of Megan, but on Jesus Christ. When it all trickles down, there's a lot of things that make pathway, pathway, but when it all comes down to it, it's about Jesus Christ. He was uh, was born, he died, he was buried, but he rose again. It's Him crucified. That's the foundation of this church. His Word coming alive in you and I. For 12 years, that's been our passion. Let's keep that foundation underneath us. Because the rains came. But, uh, but everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them in the presence like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, beat against the house, and it fell with a giant crash. You remember? The house stood firm that was built on the firm foundation. Over the past 12 years, you know we've had rains, we've had storms, we've had tornadoes, not in a physical sense, unless you live down in Napanee. But, um, uh, but we've, we've had all, but this church, I guess this is what I, I just, we're still here. 12 years, we're still here. Your marriage has seen issues. You've had times of where the rain has come. And the storms have come and the wind has blown. You're still here. You're still here. Why? Because of your fortitude? Because of your inner strength? That I'll tell you why. It's because you're striving to build your life on that firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen? This church is not done. Uh, we're dreaming. What's the next step? 
You know, this week I read a book, uh, and it had this, this quote from Wayne Gretzky, soccer great. This is what he said. He, this, <laughs> hockey, hockey, thank you. He said, skate where the puck is going, not where it's been. He tries to skate where the puck is going, not where it's been. If the puck is here, the great hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, he didn't go to the puck. He went to where he thought it was going to go. That's who we are. We're not looking just to go where every other church is going. We're saying, Spirit of God, speak to us. Holy Spirit, speak to us. We will fast, we will pray, and we'll hear from God. And say, I kind of feel like this is, and we'll go. And then the Holy Spirit says, you took the step of faith, now I'm going to bless it. And we'll go, and we're going to bless it. We're going to start a church in a community full of churches. Does Middlebury need another church? Twelve years ago I heard that over and over. Yeah, I think it did. We're going we're gonna to step out and build a building. We're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to try this. We're going to build a church that's simple, that really is life groups, Sunday morning services, kids ministry, youth ministry, and, and missions. Five things. We're going to build a church that's simple. Can you do that? Holy Spirit led us to do that. Holy Spirit says, I'm going to bless that now. We're going to go where the Spirit says, and we're just going to trust the Holy Spirit to come along. That's who we are. We're building on the firm foundation of Christ Jesus and that proclamation. And I, I just, if you wonder, what's the vision for the next 12 years? Right there it is. We're going to keep building. I'm going to keep challenging you. Build your marriage. Build your children. Build every relationship you have on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Because storms will come. And you're going to stand firm. I just declare that over you right now. You are going to be standing firm and standing strong because of Jesus. Amen? We want to worship one more time together. Let's sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Hallelujah. Worship His holy. like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like I worship your holy name. 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 Hallelujah. I worship your holy name. So Lord, we just give you praise. God, we thank you that the final chapter in the book of Pathway has not been written. God, we thank you for the 12 years, and there's a new novel now. There's a new, there's a new couple. There, there's just, you're just open. We just got started, God. There, there are hundreds and thousands more in northern Indiana that need to come to know Jesus. And Lord, you're going to flow through us. You're going to use us to reach them and bring them into this family and, and, and confront them with the truth of the gospel in a loving way, and they're going to respond respond to it. We thank you for that, God. Lord, I ask for every single person here this morning, as we even search our own hearts, as Megan said, am I saying yes to you? Am I saying yes to you in service? As Keith said, am I walking in the freedom that you desire me to have? And God, as, as you brought forward in Matthew chapter 7, is my firm foundation in Christ. Lord, I just want to take one moment right now and I want to pray for the person here this morning who is running from you. They have no relationship with you. Maybe one time they did, but they, they're running from you. Or maybe this is the first time they ever understood who Jesus really is exemplified through this local church. God, they know the fact that they are a sinner. All of us were born sinful. God, I pray for that person right now as they take a step right now, even as I'm praying, and say, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. 
I believe in Jesus Christ. I don't understand it all. I don't know the Bible through and through. But I know enough to know that Jesus was real. And I need Him. Just like Ryan said in that video, God, there are people here today who say, I just, I'm at the end of my rope. I need Jesus to come. Lord, as they invite you in, I thank you that you are, you are coming into their heart, coming into their lives right now. As they repent of their sin, confess their sins, Lord, you're faithful and just to forgive every one of them. There's not one sin that, they, that won't be forgiven by you. And so, God, I just thank you right now, even as I pray, that people are turning their hearts over to you. They're committing their lives to you, Lord, never to be the same again. Lord, we bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. Now, Josh, am I right? We need to get up here. Everyone? Who, who needs to come up here? Who? Just, just me.